Hello there everybody, Nubkex here, and welcome to a quick tips video for the Grom the Paunch campaign uh, coming in the brand new DLC, The Warden and the Paunch. Um, so yeah, this will be some, uh, we'll click through this stuff, this will be a couple of quick tips to get you uh, into a good start as Grom the Paunch. Uh, a couple of things here for Vortex campaign, this is on the Vortex, but a lot of these will apply to uh, Mortal Empires as well, of course. So. Uh, one of the first things, let's talk about his army comp. What units do you want to use here in your army? What's going to work really well? Uh, this is the really interesting thing that took me by surprise. Very much so when I came to playing this. Um, <clears throat> but you can see here that we get 10% physical resistance for goblin units. And also half upkeep for chariots and pump wagons. Um, I want to focus on the goblins first. 10% physical resistance. So that's against all physical attacks, ranged or melee or otherwise. He also gets other nice buffs to the goblins as well. Goblin Tide gives them 15 armor, and they also get plus 6 melee attack. Down to size gives them plus 10 bonus versus large, and another plus 6 melee attack. Okay, you put all that stuff together, plus the new... Oh, I can't show it quite here, because it's not... Oh, I can show it. It is unlocked. You can even give them another 25 armor here with scrap upgrades, or you can actually give them some armor piercing. Uh, I think the armor is going to be amazing early game, um, and the armor piercing may be a bit better later game, but I, I recommend scrap armor here. You put all this stuff together, what do you end up with? You end up with... Goblins that have great physical resistance that have actually they can have about 70 armor 70 armor not even kidding It's insane uh, and tons of bonus melee attack bonus versus large all this stuff. They become extremely powerful So that's uh, oh, and of course you of course of course of course want to grab the gobos Which gives them another eight melee attack and another eight melee defense um, And suddenly you have these units who are dirt cheap have this massive unit size so awesome all these units are getting all these benefits uh, and all of these these bon bonuses to their stats, because their stats are baseline, relative, pretty damn low. They're pretty bad. They're relatively low. They're relatively weak. But those all add up, and they become super powerful. So seriously, for Grom the Paunch, this is my number one tip, believe it or not, in terms of building your army. I recommend having, like, minimum of six, probably more like eight of these goblins. Like, we're going to throw her in. That fishy tittle muncha, she's gonna go into Grom's army, right? We can have the two of them and then eight goblins and you're gonna do really, really well. They're gonna be a monstrously good front line. Um, and the money savings you're gonna make compared to having like more expensive uh, units. Um, you can have, again, you can put that into growing your economy. You can put that into your other armies. Uh, it's going to really pay off super well. So Grom is going to have a, a very powerful army, even with very low tier units uh, from the get-go. Same thing with these Goblin Archers. They get some amazing upgrades. Check out the heavy ammo. Gives them 400% armor piercing damage. Okay, this isn't as crazy as it sounds, right? Because their armor piercing damage baseline is only one. So it's going to give them an extra four. Uh, but still, that's not insignificant. And it it does add up and with some of the bonuses we can get from our cauldron actually let me talk about this we have our cauldron so you can get some really cool stuff so for example uh one thing you'll, you start off with this is regeneration for goblin units so again imagine this on your little goblins on the front lines this makes them even better those easy to get 70 armor goblins in the early mid game uh they can have regeneration as well just like that uh, just permanently up. Um, you can also grab some other stuff pretty early on. I think, like, uh, yeah, you get these green spores early on. I'll come back to this. But this line down here, you get some really cool stuff. Uh, so, for example, you can get explosive ammo for the, the ranged goblins. You can get uh, more projectiles for them, all that sort of stuff. So uh, you can get nice bonuses to these goblin archers as well. So they'll be really good. And again, like maybe four to six of them uh, would be pretty nice. Probably more like four of them. Um, Pump wagons are going to be amazing as well, and that ties in exactly to Grom's um, minus 50% upkeep. So half, they're going to ca uh, cost you half upkeep, so you're going to make tons of money. And then you also have chariot races, which you can get here as well, which gives them speed, perfect vigor, and bonus armor. Uh, so that stuff is going to make them super strong. The really nice thing about these chariots is they're very quick, and they absolutely destroy uh, infantry, right? Uh, they destroy infantry, so you can kind of get them around and get them in on those infantry. Um, going to be really good. You're going to sp be spending a lot of time fighting high elves in this campaign. You're going to spend... Uh, you could spend some time fighting tomb kings if you wanted to. High elves. We also have wood elves down here. Wood elves here who are extremely dangerous, or maybe it's down here. But they're, they're just to the south of you. Wood elves. Uh, lizard men, these are not going to be so good against. I mean, they're still helpful to re rear charge um, the strong lizard men infantry, right? 
Uh, they're not going to help you at all against the big dinosaurs, though. But fighting high elves, this is really going to help you to uh, disrupt their archer formations against the wood elves. These are going to be the fast units that are going to be able to run down, um, run down their archer formations, which are going to be a massive pain in the butt for you otherwise. Uh, you have Skaven as well. Again, Skaven, their weapon teams, you can run these, uh, run them down with the pump wagons uh, or whatever, the quicker Skaven, to, like their slings and the gutter runners and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, and like, obviously the high elves, archers. <laughs> it's kind of expected. So Pump Wagon is going to be really good. And there you go. You've got an army that's actually going to see you through almost the entire game, right? Goblin Frontline, a few archers, a few Pump Wagons, and stick a few of these trolls in for some of that heavier armor-piercing damage. And bam! Like, it's, it's, I think it's the biggest strength of Grom. The biggest strength of Grom is just how how powerful an army he can get with low-tier units. Just the buffs he gives them are insane. Uh, and again, that frees up your money to go into extra armies to go into building your economy all that sort of stuff so that's the biggest tip i can give so hopefully that's uh, helpful to you um now also other tips to go with grom so obviously in terms of mortal empires let's talk about which way we're going to go here okay so we're obviously going to secure this province so we've got to take uh, mount arachnos which does have some nice uh, strategic location buildings that help you with um with little spiderlings uh not going to be very useful at the start however you can get um this uh legend uh, not legendary lord but a special lord Quite a bit into the tech trees over here. Arachnic Spider Claw. He gives bonuses to all spider units in his army, and he also gets the Arachnorock Eggs ability, which lets him spawn out um, these little mini spider units. Uh, I think the Regiment of Renown. I'm not. Yeah, you can also get the Regiment of Renown. You could get and throw it into his army as well. There's the Regiment of Renown for the. Um, where is she? Where is she? Uh, well, you've got the Lava Arachnorock Spider, who I. I think this one can. Uh, uh, no, so she does damage to, to people near her. But there is the Regiment of Renown one. It's probably here at the back. Yeah, the Arachnorock Queen, for example, she can also uh, spawn out spider hatchlings. And you can use the building in Mount Arachnos to boost up those. So that can be super powerful. Okay, that's kind of tip number two. Arachnic Spider Claw. You can make him extremely powerful with this strategic location from Mount Arachnos. So that's kind of nice. Um, but you're going to come down here, grab Lost Plateau. A new feature of the Greenskins is their Confederation mechanic. So you're going to fight, obviously, the army of these green skins over here. This one down here, Karak Zorn, the, the, the main settlement of this uh, province, um, that's held by the dwarves. Now, what you can do is when you beat the, the warlord here, you get the confederation, the new confederation for green skins. By beating him in combat, you can force a confederation with his entire faction for free. So you can just grab his faction, and you can grab his beat-up army from when you beat the crap out of him. Then what you can do is you can bring Grom down, have Grom and his good army in ambush stance, and you can use your new beat-up shitty army to, to come over here and look weak and bait these dwarves out of this. Because, you know, Karak Zorn, it's already pretty fortified. Dwarves are pretty tough. Um, so that can be a good way to bait them out. Once you finish off their army, it's much easier to take Karak Zorn. That gets you your gold mine. That gets you your, your main settlement here and leaves you in a good spot. Then you're going to come out here. You're going to have Imric and you're going to have Wood Elves. And these are your two main enemies then at that point. You're on like Elf Smashing Duty, basically from that point on. Um, okay, so there are three tips. Three tips already. Tip number four. <clears throat> Uh, and then we'll come to the, the cauldron, the big new cauldron thing for tip number five. Tip number four, um, in terms of your walls, so this is the new uh, wall bar. So you build up wall by, uh, mostly by winning battles. Mostly by winning battles. Also, you know, raising settlements, uh, previous wall success, that sort of stuff, right? Once this bar builds up, you can declare a wall. I think in my campaign, uh, I had, you know, three main walls. The first one was against Imric. Um, over here, which wasn't a great wall, to be honest, but it was decently good. The second one, I actually ended up in my campaign after destroying, uh, you know, taking on Imric and the Wood Elves. I then ended up moving down to the other half of the Southlands and taking over the bottom half while I was buddies with uh, Kemri and the Tomb Kings up in the top, who kind of provided a nice buffer for me uh, against Ulthuan. Uh, my second wall went against uh, Malice Darkblade down here, and that was uh, a very big wall. You're going to get... Um, a trophy based off of your wall that's uh, gonna be better depending on the strength rating okay so the strength rank um, of uh, of whoever you declare against 
Um, so I think to get the best trophy, they have to be within strength rank uh, 1 to 10. Malice Darkblade, probably a pretty good target for that. Um, the Dark Elves obviously have very high strength rating because of their black arcs and the upkeep reduction they get. They have these like extra super cheap armies floating around, but they're not that useful because they can't go onto land and you can kind of exploit that. So their strength rank won't always correspond to their, I mean, in the real world on, on land battles to their actual strength. So you can kind of get a good wall and get a really good reward off doing that. And then my third wall was against, uh, obviously, uh, going into Ulthuan then uh, for the end of the campaign. So... That's sort of my overview for the wall and what you want to do with that. What wall will do, it gives an extra entire army uh, of kind of bad units, but still there um, to your existing uh, army. So every single army will get another stack. Now, the size of the stack and the strength of the stack will correspond to the size and somewhat to the strength of your own stack. Um, another thing, the, the wall armies do not, at least at this point in the patch I played, they don't get replenishment. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the main thing. They don't get replenishment, so they will get pretty beat up. They do think of them as fairly expendable troops. Um, if the entire war army gets destroyed, which happened to me once because uh, they intercepted the wood elves who were using the world roots, the war army, half of my army intercepted them, but my main army didn't, so the war army got destroyed, and they didn't come back for the rest of the wall. They were just gone. They were just dead, so... Bear that in mind as well. You can lose the war part of your army. Again, that stuff is probably subject to change, um... But yeah, that, that's my tips on the wall. Then finally, in the Grom's Cauldron, the uh, final fifth big tip I want to try to give you guys here is, here you go. So this is the Cauldron. It's not as intimidating as it looks. You basically get, I only have one ingredient here, but you drop a second one in. And again, you'll get green spores really early on. You drop that in and you can cook up your meal. It's going to cost you scrap, which is the new resource. Um which you just get mostly from winning battles. Um, you can use that to cook up the meal and it'll last a whole long time. Like I think typically last 15 turns, right? It gives you a nice big buff, uh, which is really powerful. Okay, the troll meat that you start off with is super, super good for Grom. Uh, regeneration for your goblin units is just insanely powerful because again, most of your units are gonna be goblins. So they're gonna heal health constantly throughout the whole fight. It's mega, mega good. Um, but the big tip here is that if you look, when you hover over these, you see in the red text there above it, that shows you how to unlock uh, how to unlock these different ingredients, right? So you can have a quick look at these and, and figure out what to do. So for example, boar meat, this is one you might miss uh, if you wanted to get it, equipping a character with a war boar mount. Um, that, that might be one that you're possibly going to skip because you might not be interested in the war boar mount. They might have better mounts. So for example, like an orc war boss will have um, a wyvern, which is better than the war boar. So you might not bother getting the war boar, but if you want to get boar meat, you might want to do that. That sort of stuff, you know, do a successful call to wall, that sort of thing. But yeah, you can see these like, so for example, some of them might be quite missable. So over here, like Stunty Ale, Sack a Dwarf Settlement. Um, you, if you really, really want Stunty Ale, what does Stunty Ale do? Uh... Gives dulled senses for trolls and giants and lowers recruitment costs for trolls. So if you're quite excited to play with the new trolls, might be worth actually sacking Karak's Um There aren't any other dwarves over here, right? The other dwarves are like way over here or somewhere in the spine of Sotek. So that might be worth doing on Vortex map if you want to get that ingredient, right? Consider that. Uh, you know, other stuff here... Eh. Some of them, you know, the sea things you mostly get from just sea treasures, right? Mostly from sea treasures. Some of them are kind of awkward, like, you know, uh, sacking an empire settlement on the Vortex map, going to be awkward. You mostly just get this from sea treasures. Um, some of these are leveling up, not too bad. Uh, again, there's one up here. Oh, yeah, recruit the swamp things, regiment of renown. So some regiments of renown affect it. Um, you'll get this pretty pretty early on if you're fighting uh, Imric, obviously, Prince of Dragons. You're going to get explosive ammo for your Night Goblin. So I, for a lot of my early game campaign, I used Troll Meat plus Dragon Tail. And that was super, super nice, right? Um, explosive ammo for your Goblins to really up their damage. Sacking a Dark Elf Settlement, you've got Malice Darkblade to the south. Um, this is like a quest battle. Uh, flying creatures of Lustria. Yeah, you should get that pretty easily as well. Anti-large. This is going to be clutch, actually. Hollowbone ammo. Anti-large. That's extremely potent when you do fight the lizard men, right? Because they're going to have a lot of large units, and you're going to struggle against them. Like, your, uh, your trolls are going to struggle a bit against those even. The trolls are going to have a bit of a tough time with their low leadership. Um, and... Your, your wagons, your chariots are not very good against large there for infantry, so the large units. Um, and the goblins are going to struggle there too. Pretty much all your army is going to struggle against the big monsters for the for the lizards. So archers with the anti-large ammunition, that can be super, super helpful. Um, 
or then uh, doing a call to war against an elf faction again. You'll almost inevitably get this one, but it gives fire damage. Uh, nice against regenerating units, like if you wanted to fight the Tomb Kings or whatever, this would be a really good one to grab, for example. That sort of thing. So you get the idea here. Just pay attention to some of the unlock conditions, you know, and you can work towards some of them. You'll pick up most of them naturally, but there are some that you need to do very specific things like sacking settlements. So just check out that. Again, it might be updated in certain patches and so on. And there you go, guys. That's a quick look. Uh, in my opinion, in terms of uh, in terms of how to big uh, focus on the Grom campaign, so uh, yeah, uh, enjoy the the power of the low tier units with Grom. Really, just grab beeline, you know, get root marcher for campaign movement, and then max out to Gobbo's is going to be absolutely incredible. Obviously, his own skill line, uh, Goblin Tide. You can have mega powerful Goblin units. Um, you can buff those Goblin units to to crazy uh, heights and lengths with the cauldron, uh, which is mostly what you want to do. Have some chariots to deal with archers and um, all that sort of stuff. They're going to be invaluable against wood elves and and uh, high elves and all of that sort of stuff. And then trolls to to help your gobos out in the front line. And there you go. Um, they're my main tips for, for Gram. Uh, hope you found it helpful. Give it a like if you did. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.